finance and ministers of petroleum of that time were parties to that meeting and during that meeting a decision was made to stay action on that memo it was a very simple reason kerosene is a fundamental um, product for all nigerian polity and most of us sitting here uh, on both ends of this table uh, may not deal in kerosene daily but masses of nigerians do and there was a reason that government government originally put a subsidy on kerosene and kept it at 50 naira per liter it is true that while even today nnpc supplies it at that amount even though the landed cost is 150 million 150 naira per liter it may not get to uh, a lot of nigerians at that price the sabotage of our product lines means that we cannot inexpensively uh, move uh, this particular product across the country and of course some marketers take advantage of this more than others even though dpr does its best to sanction as much as it can so you will get bridging costs uh, in different areas since most of these products are moved across the country uh, by road suffice it to say that there was a reason for staying action and it was because if you withdraw the subsidy on kerosene suddenly obviously kerosene will go up to at least three times the amount it is on the streets for today which would cause a major problem for the economy and for uh, um, the government at that time i assume as well not to mention untold hardship for masses of nigerians uh, so this i believe was the basis for them staying action the gmd at that time wrote two memos um, asking the minister of finance uh, for clarification on the state action based on the fact that there was a presidential memo no reply came the gmd after him also wrote a memo we have those memos attached and no clarification came um, hence the subsidy uh, uh, remained now the issue of uh, deduction at source which has again been a very sensitive issue and has been brought up again and again is again one that i think uh, for the basis of for the sake of the nigerian polity i need to say this very clearly if you land a product at 150 naira and you sell it at 50 naira there is a 100 naira gap somebody has to cover that 100 naira if it is not budgeted for and nnpc is not able or was not able to retrieve that amount in this case based on the first line charge in the appropriation act which is there clearly it means that nnpc would have gone down or gone under a long long time ago just under the weight of that subsidy gap alone it would have gone under and it would probably have taken the rest of the economic uh, uh, community uh, of west african states along with it as well as our national economy so there are a number of sensitivities that have to be looked at here i do think that the law courts because i heard the cbn governor saying that uh, he would not accept the legality of deductions for crude that may be so but i think that the appropriate body to decide might in fact have to be the law courts of nigeria and at that point i think everybody uh, will do what they have to to do but i can assure you at this point in time the business of kerosene has become a very distracting and messy business in terms of all that is happening and all that is being said in the polity it would be very simple for nnpc and the minister of petroleum to withdraw from the issue of uh, kerosene provision there are not many marketers who will step up to the plate at this time since there is no subsidy paid on it to take over kerosene uh, distribution in this country they would come in but it would take a while in the period in which it takes again the figure for kerosene would jump up astronomically and we all know that so again we try to keep a balance in these things to ensure that the masses of the country are not put out even more than they already are uh, with the various costs of kerosene all over the country and then finally uh, distinguished uh, chair i do want to point out two things first of all that um, 
in terms of the uh, um, reconciliation that was done by PPPRA, DPR, and of course uh, NNPC, since the 2004 Petroleum Support Funds, at that time, of course, when PPPRA was set up to manage the Petroleum Support Funds, these reconciliations have been done as a matter of course. And the two statutory bodies set up to do that reconciliation have been doing that uh, uh, reconciliation. There has never apparently been a problem with it until now. I have no issue whatsoever with the forensic audit being done. But I put it to you, distinguished uh, uh, um, uh, chairman, that if a forensic Re, uh, um, audit is to be done on this particular period in time, then perhaps we should be going back to uh, 2004 when this entire process started and forensically auditing everything since then, uh, since there hasn't been a problem with the statutory bodies performing their function uh, up till now. That is on that particular matter. On the issue of NPDC, I would just like to state again for the public that because I've heard this time and time again, and it appears as if the strategic alliance NPDC, NPDC did with the Atlantic Energy was something out of the ordinary. NNPC and NPDC have been doing modified carrier arrangements, service contracts, alternative fundings for over 15 years. In fact, most of them are similar uh, to, the, uh, to what we do in the PSAs. There is not much difference to that at all. When companies come in because we need funding on particular uh, projects and put forward the cash calls for the country to be able to go ahead and produce on those products, on those uh, particular projects, it is actually those companies that are out on a limp, not us because at the end of the day, they will not make their money back from us for another four to five years. Uh, but I do believe that the entire details of that particular alliance, as the entire details of many others, um, are available. NNPC, NPDC will give them to you as we go along. And finally, if kerosene subsidy is removed today, Kerosene will cost more than petrol. I thank you, distinguished sir, chairman. Honorable Minister, do you have a either minutes of meeting or any documents uh, to support the the stay action uh, decision? Oh, okay, when NFC you address that, right? Okay, that's one. Two. Uh, my second question is, uh, and this goes to both you and uh, the Minister for Finance. Is there a provision in the 2014 budget for subsidy payment for kerosene? If there is no provision for subsidy payment for kerosene, how do you intend to continue subsidizing kerosene? Do you intend to submit a supplementary request to the National Assembly to cover subsidy payments for kerosene or what? I, but the two ministers would like uh, something to be said on this. Uh, you want to ask him? Or we want to ask him? So this one. Okay. Honorable. Oh, no. Let's... Okay, what is that you will address? <laughs> that is on the state action issue. On the subsidy, I'm asking a question going forward if there is provision in the budget, uh, you have said that if we remove stop subsidy now, kerosene will cost about three times what it costs now. Okay, assuming kerosene subsidy uh, needs to be paid, is there is that captured in the 2014 uh, appropriation proposal? 
and if it is not uh, is there any plan to